Hey everyone, I'm very excited about today's episode. This is about an exploration that has been unfolding in my own life and I'm really excited to share this with you today. And I want to speak about giving yourself permission. So permission to be who you are, permission to show up as all of you. And I want to lens this through the journey from maiden to mature feminine. And this is really the challenge that I see with this journey. Most of us live in a culture that encourages us to stay young. So this culture teaches us or tries to convince us that it's better to stay in our maiden energy. And there's a whole industry that's geared towards keeping us flawless and keeping us wrinkle-free and keeping us a certain size. And even if you look at social media, there are so many filters that smooth you out and hide how you really look. And there's no judgment here. I have used these myself in the past. And I think what happens is when we see others doing this, it's tempting for us to follow the crowd. And there's also an internal relationship in terms of how do we relate to ourselves to getting older. And I think that this is such an important conversation for us to have. So in today's exploration, this is going to be really helpful for you. If you desire to show up as your full self, if you want to step into the full power of mature womanhood, and if you want to be sovereign in your choices and in your actions. And I'll also tell you that this is one of the things that I guide women through in my coaching. And I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of this episode. So in this episode today, what I want to do is really explore the the maiden versus the mature feminine energy or roles that we play in life. And then I'm also going to share with you two practical ways that you can step into the power of your mature feminine. So before we start, I'd like to just create some context and share with you my view and interpretation of how I see this. So the maiden is a well-known archetype and you might recognize her from the three faces of the feminine. So we have the maiden, the mother and the crone. And in the past few years, there's a new phase, which I work with a lot in my coaching, which is the queen or the mage. And she fits in between the mother and the crone. So to me, the mature feminine straddles both the mother and the queen phase. So it's really in these phases of mother, where we don't necessarily speak of mothering in the sense of birthing a baby, but also birthing any kind of creative endeavor, any business, any project into the world. So that phase of mothering and then the phase of queen where we really step into our inner wisdom. And I see the maiden energy for this exploration. The maiden energy is for me, the immature child. So really the maiden in her shadow form. And you may experience this um, different, but I wanted to share with you and place with you how I see this. So if we look at what are some of the signs or characteristics of this maiden or immature child, and we really see her as someone who is looking for that knight on the white horse to come and rescue her, to take her away and to solve all her troubles by putting her in a castle and taking care of all of her needs. This maiden or this immature child is walking around with this idea of may I. So always checking externally, am I allowed to do this? May I do this? And you might find that there's an aspect of rebellion that comes in, but usually 
in this shadow form, the rebellion is not the clear, pure, fire-burning rebellion of rebelling against um, oppressive systems, but it's the rebellion of testing, may I do this? Is it going to be okay if I do this? So we see that the maiden compromises herself to be popular. She compromises herself to be accepted. She punches holes in her own bucket. Now, if you have been listening to my podcast for a while, you know that I love using this analogy of where we intentionally or unintentionally, we punch holes in our own bucket, which allows our life force, our personal power to flow out. I also see that the maiden is insecure in that she's always looking for permission from outside authority. So always looking externally to confirm whether something is acceptable, whether something is okay. She throws tantrums or she sulks to get what she wants. And for me, this maiden energy, this immature child energy really played out in me not taking myself seriously. Even as a grown up woman, I struggled to take myself seriously because I had this internal feeling that I'm not there yet and feeling as if others know better than me. It also played out often in my life where I was afraid of getting into trouble So take a moment here and feel into how does this maiden or immature child perhaps show up in your life. Alrighty, so moving on to the mature feminine and let's explore how I experience the mature feminine. And I really see that the mature feminine lets her lived experience guide her. So she takes her life experiences and a deep knowing in her bones of what is true for her, what is real for her, and she lets that guide her instead of waiting for others to tell her where to go or what to do or how to be. The mature feminine really taps into her own wisdom and to be able to do this, she needs to be clear on what she values. She needs to be clear on what she desires. And you often hear this expression, um, and I'm going to drop an F-bomb here, so just warning if you have small children with you, of getting to a point where you don't give a fuck. And really, the mature feminine doesn't operate in that kind of energy because community still is important to her. So she does care, but she doesn't care to betray herself. So she doesn't do that, make choices and show up at the cost of herself. Something else that I see the mature feminine does is that she centers her pleasure and here I'm speaking specifically about sensual pleasure. It is that delight of bathing in all of the experiences that life has to offer us and taking that in through our senses, taking that in and experiencing it in our inner world, the internal felt senses. So not only getting that from the outside, but also accessing that from within. And historically for me, traditionally for me, I always used to place pleasure after productivity. So in my culture and in my family system, hard work was very important. So important, and I don't disagree with that. I do believe that hard work is important. What I don't believe anymore is that hard work comes before anything else. I'm embodying a more feminized way of living and I'm really Every day I'm holding the intention to center my pleasure, to center my femininity. And to me, it means that I don't reward myself. I don't place pleasure at the end of hard work. That's what I mean with reward myself. I do reward myself. But I don't keep my pleasure for at the end, only after all the work is done. 
So just curious here, what is your pleasure story? Do you allow yourself to experience pleasure? Is pleasure intertwined with how much value you have brought to the day, how productive you have been before you are allowed to feel pleasure? So curious about that. Now, the mature feminine also doesn't apologize for what she is feeling. She welcomes it all. And she knows that there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing to be judged. There's nothing to be fixed. So she's juicy and she's confident. And she has a certain flair about her. So just curious now to find out from you how these two energies land for you. How do you feel when you feel into the maiden? How do you feel when you feel into the mature feminine? And which of these are at play in your life? So I want to share with you now two practical ways that you can step into the power of your mature feminine if that is something that you desire more of in your life. And the first practical suggestion that I have is to examine your shoulds. Okay, so what do I mean by this? We all have an unwritten list of shoulds. And Gary Craig, who's the founder or the creator of EFT Tapping that I am also trained in, he calls this the writing on your walls. So our subconscious mind, imagine that the subconscious mind is a palace. Your subconscious mind is a palace. And all the ideas and the socializations and the conditionings and the things that you were told about yourself and about the world and what it means to be acceptable and lovable, all of these things are written on the walls of this palace. And the truth is, some of these are worth keeping and some of them might just be rubbish. But only you can decide which of these are worth keeping and which of them are rubbish. So typically, when we make decisions, we tend to refer to this writing without questioning it. And these shoulds then often take the form of limiting limiting beliefs. And due to the often hyper-masculine culture that many of us live in. As we refer to this writing on our walls, because we rely on our minds more than the wisdom of our body, we've been trained in following the power and the, the thought processes of the mind. But what happens is when we operate on that level, we end up overriding the feelings that gets evoked in the body from these writings. So if it is a limiting belief, even if you refer to that, even if you let that guide your actions, you might experience feelings in your body that tells you this is not right. This is not for me. This is not what I want. And many women report feeling this as a contraction or a tightening and a heavy feeling. And in my body, I have felt this um, entering and engaging with a limiting belief. I imagine that is what a traffic jam feels like. So it's a, a sense of a sludgy slowness where everything has to squeeze through a small opening. So part of this journey from immature child, from maiden to the mature feminine is to take a look at the writing on your walls and to explore, are they still true for you? And you can do this by checking in, how do they feel in your body? And then liberating the tension or the constrictions that they create. So what we want to do essentially is we want to release them from your nervous system This deletes that writing and it allows you to write new guidelines, new ideas, new concepts, new beliefs on the walls in your palace. All right, so if this is the first one, imagining, reimagining and getting clear on your shirts and getting rid of the rubbish that doesn't serve you anymore, 
The second point has to do with getting clear on where in your life are you still in your maiden energy and getting clear what is it that you want to embody instead. How do you desire to show up instead? And here I'm specifically talking about where you are in your shadow maiden, where your immature child is taking charge and making decisions and showing up in ways which are limiting to you. So if you go back to the points that I shared at the very beginning, just explore and feel into which of those landed for you. And where do you recognize that your maiden or this immature child um, is in charge? And then once you are clear on that, orienting yourself to what is it that you desire instead? What is it that you want to feel? And asking, how can you embody your mature feminine instead? So this is really where we use the power of our intention. So you might know, because you might have experienced this for yourself, is when you are in a stressful situation, your body responds in a certain way, your heart starts beating faster, the adrenaline gets, you know, pumps through your, through your system, um, you might feel your face flushing or you start shaking. And when you only think or imagine this stressful situation, your body responds in the same way. So this, I call this the power of our intention. This is a, an ability of our intention that we can use to our advantage. And the way that I see this is the more that you begin to imagine being and behaving as, which is really the embodiment part, so imagine being and embodying this mature feminine, the truer it becomes for you. So for example, when you imagine yourself to be in your mature feminine, how do you hold yourself? What's your posture and your body language? How do you engage with other people? Like what's the energy that surrounds you? How do you dress? How do you move? How do you speak? What are the things that bring you pleasure when you are in this mature feminine energy? So the invitation here is to play around with this and feel what feels good. And this can take the form of a ritual. Perhaps you want to journal, however you want to explore this, but really getting clear on how does the mature feminine feel for you? How does she show up for you? And in my experience, the more I privately explore how my mature feminine loves to show up, the more I'm also able to embody her in the real world, in the outside world. Now, if you've recognized what I have shared with you today and you want someone to support you with making this journey, then you're so welcome to talk to me about it. I will leave a link for you in the show notes to book a free discovery call with me. We'll explore your current challenges. We'll explore what it is that you desire instead. And we'll also see if we are a good fit for each other. I have a three-month one-on-one program that I can tell you more about in the call. And I'm really um, excited about speaking with you. So go look for that link down in the show notes.